That's our integrity. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash integrity.pdf. Uh, it should work. Y'all got it? Okay, good. Um, when you have it, say amen. All right, let's get on with this. So we're going to define the word integrity because a lot of people think that integrity means that you don't make mistakes. And that's not what it means. And it doesn't mean that you're perfect either. That's not what it means. Amen? That would disqualify all of us. Amen? Amen. So, and we try to live the best way we can, but you're not going to live perfect. Can I say that? Amen. Can we still be a hole in this church and I say that? You're not going to live perfect. Now, I grew up thinking you could, and I eventually found out you can't. You need Jesus. Look at somebody and say, you need Jesus. Je the need for Jesus' salvation is built in humanity. You're going to need him. You are fashioned and designed to need him. Amen? Look at somebody and say, I know I need him. So we're not going to be in here acting like we can do it on our own or by sheer willpower. How many of you know willpower don't work? It lasts a little while. You need Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because you can't deliver yourself. Amen. If you could deliver yourself, you'd have never got in trouble. You've tried it. Everyone in here has tried it on their own power. And then you realized, I need Jesus. Amen. The word integrity in the Webster's Dictionary say, uh, means the quality of being honest. Look at somebody say, stop lying. I don't know how lying got into the church. But it, now it's just a common sin that is just okay. Your lies should haunt you. Somebody said, that's a lie. Trying to lie is a lie. Thinking you can lie, that's a lie. You just lied thinking it. But, yeah, so lying, you got to stop. We just can't do the lying. Be honest. As a Christian, you're supposed to be honest. Regardless of the consequences, you should be able to be honest. Amen. Husbands and wives, be honest. If you're going to live together, just be honest. And I tell men all the time, ain't no need of you lying to your wife because she know. They know. Sometimes she just don't feel like even just going there. But I know you lie. Like, you live there. You know, we're, we're not that complicated. We're just not. We were made first. There was no complexity needed. God did not make us complicated because he made us first. So we're the simple one. The woman is the complicated one because she has to be made for the man. So she's got to understand God and the man and the children. That's complicated. Now, don't you act like you understand the children. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't. They do. And so, just don't lie because she knows. Amen? Amen. I learned that real early. My pastor taught me that about my wife. He's like, bruh, don't lie to your wife. She knows. I'm like, man, I know she don't know some stuff. Here. She knows. She just don't feel like being bothered sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, and so I gave up on that. So whatever she asked me, so I, hey, I just have to tell her because she knows. I believe she knows. She just feel it in her toe. <laughs> Amen. So I, ain't get, I, don't, I don't come. I don't think I've ever came back to her and told her, you know, I lied about this. And I would have been, no, she, when, she, when I'm confronted, I just, here we go. <laughs> Might as well. Amen. But you need to get convicted when you lie. And that's the thing that happens. If you keep lying, you, you, your conviction will go away. Then you become a narcissist. A narcissist can lie and believe it themselves. Yeah, that's a form of mental illness. When you really believe it when you said it. Just because you said it. 
man, let me move on. The quality of being honest, that's integrity. And having strong moral principles, moral what? Uprightness. The state of being whole and undivided is also integrity. Being whole and undivided. A divided person, they call that schizophrenia. That's when you can take your own face off and look at it. Mentally. It really is. I, that's a mental, that's a, that was a good description. Wasn't it? That's what it is. Yeah, you're divided. You're divided within yourself. That's schizophrenia. So the state of being whole is integrity. The condi condition of being unified, unimpaired, or sound in construction. So that means you're built well. That's integrity. Something that has integrity. I like to use the example of a rubber band. A rubber band, a rubber band with integrity, no matter how you stretch it, it bounces back to its original form. That's integrity. If I stretch it and it tears, it doesn't have. That rubber band lacks integrity. Right? Internal consistency. Ooh. Internal consistency. Internal consistency. Is I mean, I feel sorry for women that marry men that aren't consistent. That's like living on a houseboat. And whatever the waves say, there goes the relationship. No consistency. Water's never the same. <laughs> it, it keeps changing. And it's hard to live with someone that keeps changing. Keep starting stuff and quitting. That's not consistent. So it's internal consistency or lack of corruption in electronic data also is a definition of integrity. Okay. Your life will always testify of your what? Integrity. Your life will testify of your integrity. It's nothing you can talk or brag about. It's all about your decisions and the outcome of them. You can't talk integrity. You can't convince somebody that you have integrity. No, we're going to take the outcome of your decisions and judge your integrity. Because life is going to do that. Life is going to be the report card for your integrity. Job 31 and 6. Let me be weighed in an even balance that God may know what? My integrity. So Job was praying this prayer when he was going through the trials that he was going through. He was praying prayers through this whole chapter, different things. His friends came, was talking crazy. He had to go through all of these things, but the Bible said that he kept his integrity. It doesn't mean that he was sinless because during these prayers, he was repenting of sin. So he knew he wasn't perfect, but he knew that he had integrity to stick it out. That's what his integrity was. Amen? Though none are perfect and all are flawed, we must maintain our integrity during trying times. So, integrity and being perfect aren't the same thing. You have to maintain your internal integrity, your drive to do what is right. You have to maintain that. Are you going to get everything right? No. But you have to maintain the desire and the drive to do it right. That's integrity. Especially during trying times. So when you're going through trying times, you don't want to give the devil access to you. You want to keep your in integrity to the place to where you can follow through with what God is saying in these end times. Job 2 and 9 gives us an example of this because his wife, just all out of order, spirit of Jezebel came on her. 
Then said his wife unto him after he was sick, and the Bible said he was, he was smelly, and he had these big boils covering his body and all that. And she says, does thou still retain thy integrity? Like, you going to still have integrity? Man, curse God and die. But this shows you, in spite of it, he still had integrity. In spite of being tested and pounced on by the devil, he still had his integrity. To the point to where his wife was tired of his integrity. You too tough. Curse God and die. Integrity is how you're able to remain steadfast regardless of past failures and issues. That's integrity. You don't let your past define you. That's integrity. Your past does not define you. Who you were is not who you are. What you did is not who you are. The past, look at somebody and say, the past is the past. That's not you anymore. Amen? Now you got to stop doing it to be able to say what I just said. <laughs> Don't be, that's not me anymore and got a blunt in your pocket. That ain't me. <laughs> no, no, that's not you anymore. That's, <laughs> that's integrity. It's not you Integrity is how you're able to remain steadfast. So regardless of what happened in your past, it does not affect your future. You're able to walk away from your past and maintain integrity. Amen? Amen. Job 2 and 10. This is Job's response to her when the devil got in her, his wife. But he said to her, you speak as any foolish woman would speak. Tell her, Job, you out of order. You speaking dumb. You speak as a foolish woman. But listen to what Job said. Oh, and this is going to help somebody. He said, shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? <laughs> And all this, the Bible said Job did not what? He kept his integrity. Because Job was thinking, man, look at all the wonderful things God has done for me. How he's blessed me. Like, why would I blow that? Things are bad right now, but look how good things were. Job was continuing to look at how good things were and how God had provided for him. So I can go through the bad since things have been so good. And here's the crazy part. You're going to go through bad anyway. So why curse God and die? Why are you going through just because things are bad? That means that you're not grateful and thankful for the good times. Amen. I can't tell you how many times God is, the spirit has kicked me and made me get up. Don't you wallow as good as I've been to, to you. You go through it. You go through it, you going to be all right. Oh, Lord, the devil. Oh, Lord, Lord, the devil. And God is like, well, you wasn't saying that when things were good. You wasn't praying like this. I didn't hear from you every hour. <laughs> That's why things need to get a little bad sometimes. Get your attention. Amen. But Job did not sin. Integrity is also the ability to not tear when you are stretched. <laughs> this is key given the times that we're in. You're going to be stretched. Get ready. If you haven't been stretched yet, you're going to be stretched. Because the devil is out of control right now. Y'all, the devil is jumping in people at will. 
People don't have a spiritual foundation, no power, no holy. They don't have anything to protect them. I'm talking about church folks. Protect them from the devil just jumping in them and using them. Church folks. Church folks are almost worse than the world because you at least expect somebody in the church to have integrity. To watch what they're saying. To not try to destroy people. I would expect somebody from the church to say they know Jesus to act a little better. But in the end times, they are just possessed. So you have to be able to be stretched without tearing. Your family going to stretch you. Because you know they don't understand. Amen. Isn't it funny? They didn't understand you trying to homeschool because you in that cult ABC. The cult that you just, oh, y'all in a cult. Y'all in danger. Y'all know y'all was in danger of me. Certain times of the week, I grow horns and a tail. And I'm going to get you. <laughs> y'all ain't heard? You're supposed to be scared to be in here. Homeschooling is so funny, though. Everybody homeschooling now. They calling the ABC folks. Uh, what, 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 y'all still doing that co-op? <laughs> yeah, we doing the co-op. But don't come over here because it's dangerous over here. Yeah. Pastor is crazy. He's dangerous. <laughs> Cop folks scared to come to church. And folk believe anything. Like I'm in here preaching with a magic wand. <laughs> Alec Kazam. <laughs> I'm doing magic and putting roots on people. <laughs> roots. Roots, whatever it is. I'm practicing voodoo. I ain't preaching the Bible. I'm preaching out of some other book. <laughs> man, man. But God knew, so you got to be able to <laughs> be stretched. Don't let these folks tear you. You got to be able to be stretched, tested, and tried. And then after the stretching and they let go, you bounce right back. That's integrity. That's in integrity. Hey, man. This is key given the times we're in. Matthew 10 and 22, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. He said this was going to happen. But he that does what? Endureth to the end shall be what? Saved. Amen. You know, some folks can't make it to the end because they wasn't saved. Only saved folks make it to the end. Amen. When a person can stay the course, not quit, and continue no matter how they are being attacked, it shows what? True integrity. You can make it no matter what's coming your way, you're going to stay in the race. That's integrity. Quitters don't have integrity. Matthew 5 and 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So this has happened before and the prophets had to maintain integrity. You're going to have to deal with folks persecuting you. Amen. When you decide to make good decisions for your home, you're going to have to contend with the people who decided to not make good decisions. They're going to have a problem with you. When you decide to stay in your marriage no matter what and work it out, the ones that quit their marriage are going to be mad at you. When you decide to be the head of your home, the man of the house, and stand up in the doorway of your home and be the strong man to keep your goods at peace according to the word. When you decide to do that, the weak men are going to be mad at you. 
the weak men and the bossy women. The ones that's married to the Jezzies, they're going to they gonna hate you because you're making them look bad because we run our house a little differently. She controls everything. And I just sit on the porch and wait for her to tell me what to do. They're going to be mad at the strong men. Yeah, they're going to be mad at you because you're strong. And the more strength you have, the weaker they appear. I tweeted the other day, the, 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 and I think, I forgot who sent me that, but somebody sent me this, this, this commander, and he was talking about different types of men, and the strong men and weak men, and he was saying how the, a weak man is the most dangerous man alive. A weak man. Because he fights with no articles of war. He fights with, he, he hurts himself. He hurts everybody around him. He hurts the people he says he loves just to try to hurt you. A weak man fights like a girl. Yeah, scratching and biting. You can win that fight against a girl, but you're going to look like you lost going to be chunks of skin, pieces of hair, scratches, bites, everything. That's a weak man fighting. Strong men can sit down and handle their differences. They don't even need an audience. But a weak man has to have an audience because he's weak. So he has to feed off everyone else's opinions to make him feel better in the fight while he's biting and scratching. That sounds like a rap lyric, bite and scratch it. But why he just, I mean, he's just whatever's on, he's just fighting like a girl. I know I'm preaching. This is the truth. Amen. But that's going to happen. So just because you're making a decision to even do things differently, the people that's not making that decision are going to be upset. They're going to come after you. Amen. Maintaining over time gives us a good track record so that we can be trusted by God in the future. Now, y'all know God builds, you build trust up with God as you're obedient to him. God is not going to give you the deep things of him if he can't trust you. God has to know how you're going to handle situations and if you're going to maintain your integrity. He has to know. That's how he trusts you with things. You know, I'm working on this message now and God is just, I mean, some of the stuff he's opening up to me, I'm just like, wow, God, this is just amazing. And the Holy Spirit keeps speaking to me and telling me, I'm going to keep giving you stuff because I trust you. Amen. You don't have to clap. You don't have to clap, but you you experiencing it. But he's, I'm going to keep, keep doing it because I trust you. I trust you to not get up and use the platform I've given you for your own personal stuff. I don't get on the platform and talk about personal stuff. Amen. I mean, folks have done some wicked stuff to me, and you'll never hear their name from my mouth. I don't have to. God trusts me to not even talk about that in public. Why, why would I say that? God trusts me to know when I pick this microphone up, I'm preaching Jesus. And I'm not preaching me. He knows when I pick this microphone up, I'm not defending me. I wouldn't have time to preach the message if I'm defending me. Just like you. We, that'd be all day. But this is about God. This is about what he wants. So if he can trust you, then that's why he gives you things. That's why he tells you things. That's why whenever you pray, Lord, I want that next level. God, I just, I feel like I need to go deeper. He'll back up. Come on. Let's go deeper. And if you're not willing to take those steps toward him, you're not going to get it. Because he has to trust you. Amen? Some folk don't ever grow up. They just don't ever grow up. And then wonder why God won't use them. God won't use you because your mouth too big. 
God won't use you because you got personal vendettas. God won't use you because you're going to misuse the platform he gives you. So you got to have a good track record so you can be trusted by God in the future. James 1 and 6, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a, a wave of the sea driven with the wind and what? That's a wavering person. I don't want to be around somebody that when they get upset, they waver. I'm praying for you women that are married to men like that. Now, you're going to be like that as a woman. You're going to waver. Depending on what the calendar say. It might be wavering day. Today is the day of wavering. That's the way you're made. Nothing wrong with that. That's just how you are. You know, when you get married, over time you begin, uh, as a man, you begin to just adapt to that. Like you know what time it is. I can speak to my wife in the morning and I know what time it is. By the way she answers, in most cases, by the way, she just don't answer. Because it's too early in the morning to be asking all the questions. See, I heard that for 10 years. It took 10 years. I heard that for 10 years. It's too early in the morning to be asking all the questions. So after about 10 years, Julian, it kicked in. Oh, maybe I shouldn't ask these questions early in the morning. Jay Brown, oh, I know you do it. You text me questions early in the morning. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I learned after about 10 years of her just, you know, because she just look at you like she ain't answering. Like, you don't understand. You never get an answer when you ask at this time. And yet you persist and continue to ask. So I had to, I had to learn. I learned, no, now. And sometimes I slip up and ask, but I don't expect an answer. Because I remember then. I remember, oh, oh, yeah, oh, okay. I won't get an answer to this until later. <laughs> yeah, man, you just, you just learn stuff. You begin, you begin to adapt. And that's fine for women, but a man... So the woman asked the man a question and he. I mean, I need to know because his feelings hurt. Whoever you are that do that, man, you trash. You are trash. You trash. You sullen trash. You should be able to answer no matter what. I don't care what happened. You should be able to open up your mouth and give an answer as a man. Because you're the leader. If you're the leader, the house is going to go the way you go. That's your son looking up at you. And you, you can't give nonchalant answers either. You know, a woman can say, I don't care all day long. What you want to eat? I don't care. You know she care, so you know where this uh, conversation is going. We're going to eventually find out what it is, but right now she's going to say, I don't care about eight times. You sure? I mean, whatever you want. I don't care. It don't matter. It don't matter. You sure? It don't matter. It just don't matter. That's just a woman. And then you say, okay, well, I'm going to get this. Oh, I don't want that. <laughs> then you try to trick them. It, it, this don't work, but I try to trick. I try to trick them. So I said, so, so where, if you hadn't talked to me, where would you have gone and got something to eat? <laughs> he tried to find a way to... And let me, let me assure you, that's never going to stop. 
That's never going to stop. That goes all to Jesus God. That's just every single day. That's never going to stop. That's just at our house. That's just the, what you want. I don't know what you want. What you want. Yeah, that's just the way it is. But a man, you can't, you can't be like that. Like you got to really, you got to come up with answers when you're asked questions by your family. I, I don't care. Yeah, you better care because everything is in your care. Amen. Amen. Women, I'm praying for you if you married an old, pouty, sullen Negro. Pouty. Emotional. Just emotional. James 1 and 6. But let him ask in faith. Oh, I already read that. For let not a man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So God obviously hates an old wavering man. A man that just goes with the, like a wave up and down. God said he ain't giving that man nothing. Success without integrity is failure. No, mm. oh, that's deep. David had a perfect track record of trusting in the power of God from the time he was a lad. He was a man, the Bible says, after God's heart. Acts 13 and 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a what? Man after mine own heart, which shall what? See, if you're a man after God's heart, you're going to fulfill all of his will. That's integrity. Don't mean you're going to be perfect. Was David perfect? But he was a man after God. God knew his heart. That's why God doesn't give us the ability to judge people. Because we can't judge hearts. Because if you're going to judge a heart... The Bible says, Sam, I mean, if you're going to just judge people, the Bible says Samuel walked in there and picked other folks. And they all, even Jesse himself, disregarded David. Disregarded David. He can't be it if we're just going by the outer appearance. If man is going to judge that situation, they would have got it all wrong. They would have picked one of David's no-name brothers. Because their names obviously didn't matter because didn't none of them do anything. <laughs> yeah, so we don't, we, we, we're not allowed to judge because we can't judge men's hearts. Amen. Even though he sinned and fell away from God, he was restored because why? He had integrity. God picked him. Now, is God God? Then God had to know what David was going to do. He just told you he's going to fulfill all my will because he's God. God knew what David was going to do when he picked David. So God obviously was not bothered with the fact that David was human. And he wasn't going to be perfect. Perfect wasn't a requirement. Integrity was. I know I'm preaching. Amen. This ought to help somebody. You better get past your past. He never let his past failures change his mind about God. David never changed his mind about God. 1 Kings 9 and 4. And if thou, this is God speaking to Solomon his son. And telling his son how you have to be in order to get my approval. If thou will walk before me as who? David thy father walked in integrity of what? Heart and in uprightness to do according to all that I have commanded thee and will keep my statutes and my judgment. So he's talking about David after David has gone on and now Solomon is king. And he doesn't speak of David's past, not his sin. He speaks of his integrity. And he tells Solomon, if you do exactly what David did, you'll be blessed. 
Because when God forgives sin, he doesn't remember it. Oh, that's the order of hand claps you're going to give? With your forgotten sins, that's it? That's all you got? Okay. <laughs> Somebody should have jumped up in like a whole church. Oh! <laughs> you don't remember, you know. <laughs> yeah! That's all he brought up, his integrity. You got to have integrity like your father had. Integrity so that I know that you're going to fulfill my will. That's what integrity is. He says, so you have to have the integrity of heart like David. God honored his faithfulness and forgave his sin because of the integrity in his heart. God knew that David would fight for him. So he invested what? God will invest much in you if he knows you'll fight for him. Now, if you're going to fight for yourself, he's not going to invest it in you. If you're going to fight for your homie, he's not going to invest it. But if, you inf if you're going to fight for God, he will invest much in you. Amen? 1 Kings 15 and 3. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. This is, and this is, well, let, let me back this up. In the book of Kings and Chronicles, David was the mark. So every king that was mentioned, whether they did good or bad, were measured by David. Now, this is integrity. <laughs> David had integrity because God measured every king by him. That's a man after God's heart. And so this is God measuring, I think this is Abijah, maybe? I don't know which king this was. I should have remembered that. And he walked in all the sins of his father, speaking of this particular king, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of who? David, his father. Now, this wasn't David's son's son, but David is the father of all kings. So this statement was made. You didn't walk in it like your father, David. David was the mark. Was David perfect? No, but he had what? Integrity. Amen. Summary. In these trying times, we must endure. We must maintain our integrity in every walk of our lives and make sure we are not tearing under the pressure of being stretched. We must not allow our past error and bad decisions to define our future outcome. Amen? We all have failed before, but that does not have to take away our integrity. God has provided a way for us to be renewed and restored if we keep our faith in him and turn from our wicked ways. David is the best biblical example for this because he was able to overcome not looking the part in the beginning, not acting the part during a period of his life, yet his heart remained steadfast toward loving God and trusting in him. God did not remember his sins, but every king after him was measured by David's integrity. God is not judging you for your past or your failures either. If you were being judged for your past and your failures, you'd be dead. <laughs> Who are we talking about? God? Quit saying that. Oh, God, gonna just start, folks just gonna start dropping that. No, they're not. Folks start dropping dead, we all lost. Quit saying that. Why would you wanna see people drop dead? I don't want to see nobody. I don't care how bad they been. I don't want to see them drop dead. Lord, leave the door open for all of us. I want everybody saved. Amen. I don't pray them prayers. You reading them David prayers in Psalms to kill folks and total destruction because they did something to you. No, I don't pray those. I'm like, Lord, just forgive me for what I've done. Can you do that? Can you, is there enough grace in this place to erase? I rap this word, though. That's what be. 
<laughs> Man, I ain't trying to know. I don't want to see nobody condemned and tore up because of bad past mistakes because I have some. Amen. So don't be praying that. Look, somebody say, stop praying that. I feel it in my spirit somebody been praying that. You don't want to see nobody drop dead. You don't want your mother-in-law to drop dead. Quit saying that. Oh, Lord, oh, she's on the plane now, Lord. Let the, let the turbulence, turbulence in Jesus' name, turbulence, Lord, turbulence. Just turbulence, God. Oh, cabin pressure. Just release the, oh, the oxygen mass fall. Oh, God. Man, what in the world? What did she do to you? <laughs> I'm not praying those prayers, man. I want to see folks say, God, forgive them. Help them, Lord, to come to this crazy senses. They crazy, Lord. Cra insane in the membrane. <laughs> Fix them, Lord. They off. They off. They, they touched. Out of sorts. <laughs> but help them, Lord. <laughs> hey, man, I don't want I don't want them. God's judgment. God's judgment is too powerful. He can't do it in small increments. Everybody around it is going to get destroyed. <laughs> no, God, no. Have mercy. See, that's how you pray. When somebody make you bad enough to where you wish they were dead, and you're looking like this, with that same face, veracity and intensity, you pray, Lord, have mercy on me. See how I'm looking? I need mercy. Because the thoughts I'm thinking are not of you, God. They're not of you. Amen. Amen. Nobody should make you that mad in this life. You wish they, man, you, amen. No, 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 we don't get that mad. We don't get that angry. But he's not judging you for past mistakes or failures. He is not a man that will turn his back on you during tough times. God is allowing you to make the decision to walk uprightly and do what? Overcome your failures. Now, let me tell you something. I'm going to try to finish this. I said it was going to be short. No, it's not. Okay, I'm doing good. But let me tell you something in here. Those of you that's just upset and mad because you made bad decisions and your decisions stink and they're rotten and you're trying to cover them up with pride and all that and then you get mad at me because I'm addressing them, just choose today to do things better. Everyone stand to your feet. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I mean, because ain't nothing left to be said. Just, just today. What's the date? October the 4th, 20 and 20. October the 4th. That's the day I'm going to start making better decisions so I don't have to get mad at somebody preaching against bad decisions. Yeah, I don't have to try to stop a church and stop you from coming to a church because the church is preaching, do better. I'll just do better. You don't have to do it here, do it somewhere else, wherever you do it. But just make it today. Can it be today? Because the people you are angry at that have made that decision, you're angry at them because one day they looked at themselves and said, you know what? I need something different for my life. I'm going to make a better decision today to do things better. You can't hate on them for that. I mean, mad at the church, mad at the word, mad at the past, just angry because you won't do right. Just pick today. October the 4th, 20 and 20. Today is the day of salvation. I'm going to act right from this day. I don't care where you were last night. You might have been at the redneck heaven. I don't know where you was. Just don't go no more. That was the last time. <laughs> that was the last time. Somebody sent me some pictures one time. This is my husband. He go to the redneck heaven. That's the only reason I know about it. And I saw the picture and it was black folk in it. I was like, what black folk do it in redneck heaven? That don't make any sense. They in there.
Man, you are really deceived. You are deceived. <laughs> but when you, <laughs> listen, God is allowing you to make the decision to walk uprightly and overcome your failures. If you have breath in your lungs, you have, you, you, you're in a place to make that decision today. Things could change for you and your family forever. I don't care who you were. I don't care what you've done. We're talking about a great God that made a provision through his son to bring salvation, to cleanse you of sin. If any man sin, he has an advocate with the father who is faithful and just to forgive him of all sin, cleanse him from all unrighteousness. That could start today. When you can continue on with the call of God, no matter how tough things are for you, then you have integrity. Do not be a quitter or one that gives up on what God expects of you. No matter how bad it was or how hard it is, you must endure this stretching and snap back into place. Keep the faith. Turn from sin and live righteously, and you will maintain the integrity it takes to make it to the end. Psalms 26 and 1. David says, judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my what? Integrity. He couldn't say, judge me, I've walked perfectly. He couldn't say, judge me, I've walked without error. No, he couldn't say any of that. But he could say, I've walked in my integrity that means god i'm not quitting like what you believed in me is true i'm gonna stay the course what you spoke is true i might have got off but i'm gonna stay the course i have trusted also in the lord therefore i shall not what slide examine me O lord and prove me try my reins and my heart for thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with the dissemblers. So the folks trying to tear it down, I'm not with them. The folks where it's all about them and their own fame and their vanity, I'm not with them. I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence. So will I compass thine altar, O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of what? All thy wondrous works. Lord, I have the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me... I will walk in what? Hmm. You better know if you have integrity. You better know if you have integrity. I preached a message in 2019, Lessons at 50. And I went through each one of those lessons speaking of the integrity that God had given me in handling certain things. And I mean immediately following the series, every one of those messages were tested. And I was stretched. <laughs> after every one of those lessons at 50, everything I preached in them came after me. And I was stretched. But I knew I had integrity. So I knew when the stretching stops and it's let go, I'm going to pop back into place. Amen. Amen. You better know. There's nothing wrong with knowing you have integrity. You're not saying you're perfect. You just know you're going to make it. Is there anything wrong with you knowing you're going to make it? Because if you don't know it, 
But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I do what? Bless the Lord. Everyone stand to your feet. Uh, he's given us integrity. And we walk in this integrity. Amen? And we're going to keep this integrity. We're going to stand. We're going to stand strong. And when we're stretched, we're going to snap right back into place. You know if the devil could stop you, you'd be stopped. If the devil could silence you, you'd be silenced. But God picks people because of their integrity. Are you going to make it unto the end no matter what you're facing? That's what we need in this hour. Amen? Everyone lift your hands up. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, Father God, for preparing us for things that are going on now and things to come. Father, and I pray right now, Father God, that every instance of the enemy trying to bring someone's past up to disqualify them and make them feel that they can't make it or that they should quit or give up or, Father God, terminate or, or just throw in the towel, whatever the case. Father God, I pray right now that you will show them why you called them in the beginning. You knew everything we would do. You knew what we would go through. You knew what would happen, and yet you still entrusted your word in us. So I pray right now, Father God, against those thoughts in anyone's mind. I pray against the spirit of sabotage. I, I pray against the spirit of quitting. I, I pray against the spirit, Father God, uh, <clears throat> lack of endurance and lack of fortitude. All of those spirits, I speak against it, God, that you would ignite, Father God, a, a fortitude in your people that they would stand strong with integrity in this hour. We are who you define us as, God. Not our past, not our situations, not other people's opinions. We are who you define us as. So God, help us to live up to your definition of us. And we pray right now, God, that we will be able to maintain in this last hour. We'll be able to make it in this last hour. Father God, we would have integrity in this last hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.